Professor Zhou, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, online, offline. Good afternoon. This is the last session, so we are about to end. I know it's a long day. It's really a fruitful day. Did you introduce who I am? Um, my name is Mali Yang. I am the editor in chief of Global View magazine. I'm very honored to be invited to be the moderator for this session um, as we talk about the challenges and implementations of just transit around the world. And Global View magazine, we've been focusing on the topic of ESG for many years. Um, we made a lot of rankings, um, surveys, interviews. We've been very dedicated in this topic. And I'm very glad to see that we're hosting this event and we are invited um, to join here. Um, next to me, um, we have actually uh, also online, we have four panelists. Um, after the presentation, we will have QA. So our first speaker, um, as we just lifted the pandemic uh, restrictions, we are very happy to see a foreign speaker, um, Professor um, Yun, uh, Sun Zhen Yun. Um, Professor Yun. She is also the co-chair of the 2050 Carbon Neutrality Commission. She is also the chairperson of sustainable development in the Korea, South Korean department. So she is a key person in promoting carbon neutrality in South Korea. So let's welcome her. <laughs> now let's welcome her. Our next speaker is from Japan. Um, he is now online. He is not Japanese. He's from Australia. If it, everything is right, his name is Gregory Trencher, Professor Gregory Trencher from Kyoto University. He's Associate Professor of Graduate School of Global Environmental Studies. So let us welcome Professor Yun. Um, the challenges of South Korea as they progress into 2050 net zero goals. And Professor Gregory Trencher will be sharing us his observation in Japan. And aside from these two uh, foreign speakers, we have two speakers from Taiwan. Now first, let's welcome um, Deputy Commissioner from National Development Council, Shika Er. And the National Development Council just a few months ago announced that um, we have a pathway for 2050 net zero uh, plan. So National Development Council indeed has played an important role in net zero path. And I think um, Vice Chairperson Xu will have very good discussion with us. And of course, we should talk about labor rights and of course, Today we have a representative from our national union, and he is now working in Kaohsiung. Um, he is director general of the Kaohsiung City Confederation of Trade Unions. In Taiwan, we have many petrochemical industries located in Kaohsiung. They are the higher carbon emission industries. So we just had some chit chat and I learned from them that certainly in Taiwan industries have to upgrade themselves or they export themselves. They start in overbought and we're always challenged by all kinds of transformation. For example, now we are transforming into low carbon emission and in the process, how can we protect labor's right that their voices are not neglected? that we can at the same time facilitate a, a smooth transformation, at the same time protect their welfare and jobs. So in this in today's agenda, in the last session of the day, um, each of the speaker, each of the panelists will have 15 or 20 minutes of presentation. And after that, we will have a forum of the four speakers. We will take questions. Um, on the floor and also online. So first of all, let us welcome Professor Yun for presentation and share with us her experiences, her observations of the Korean experience. Let us welcome Professor Yun. Thank you. Yeah, 
good afternoon. Uh, when the moderator introduced me, I forgot to <laughs> say hello to you, so I'm very sorry. Uh, yeah, it is my first, uh, second presentation today, so uh, to save time, maybe I will skip uh, some part of the uh, some uh, first part. But anyway, I will do my best to deliver. Uh, uh, some important point of my presentation. Yeah, uh, as was introduced, uh, my presentation title is the Load to 2050 Carbon Neutrality and the Challenges for uh, Just the Transition in South Korea. Uh, yeah, actually, you know, uh, transition, some uh, social transition toward the uh, carbon neutral society means changes in jobs. Because uh, people uh, are enjoying the, their livelihood based on current uh, energy and social system. So if we change this system, maybe uh, stakeholders can be different. And existing stakeholders uh, maybe will resist against or they can lose their jobs and they can have a difficult situation. So uh, confronting this climate crisis or uh, maybe COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we in our country, uh, people, especially uh, ex-government, uh, uh, were thought, well, maybe think, ex-government uh, worried about the jobs of the people. So, you know, uh, after the Paris Agreement in 2015 and uh, IPCC's special report on 1.5 Celsius published in 2018, there are some movement toward the Green New Deal or Green Deal. So, right after COVID-19, uh, actually, the Korean government also announced the K-Green New Deal uh, because we worried about the economic uh, decrease and uh, uh, climate crisis uh, again. So, and then uh, the government uh, declared, actually, the ex-president Moon Jae-in declared 2050 carbon neutrality on October last year. And to push the uh, move of our society toward carbon neutrality. As I presented in this morning, uh, the government established the 2050 Carbon Neutrality Commission. And it is composed of uh, around 95 commissioners. Actually, it started with 97 commissioners. But anyway, and there were two co-chairpersons, prime minister and myself, and uh, 18 ministers. And uh, 77 originally came from uh, academia, industrial sector, labor and farmer, and civil organization, youth group, and the local government. And uh, the governance system uh, became control tower of carbon neutrality policy and the focal point of public participation and communication with stakeholders and the public. And this is the uh, organization uh, I already showed you, but you can see there is a subcommission titled Just the Transition. So that was uh, one of the subcommission of uh, Carbon Neutrality Commission. So uh, it means there are some concerns, there are maybe concerns about the Just the Transition under uh, Carbon Neutrality Commission. And it is the process of carbon neutrality uh, scenarios so I already presented this morning. And you know, when we establish 2050 carbon neutrality scenario, I think, and our commissioners thought, vision and principles uh, are very important. Why or uh, which direction we should go and what kind of principles we should realize. So. Uh, we made the vision like this, building a safe and sustainable carbon neutral society free from quality of climate crisis. And we adopted the five principles, responsibility, inclusiveness, fairness, reasonableness, and innovation. And in case of uh, principle of fairness, 
we considered just the transition under the principle of principle of uh, fairness. And these are uh, two scenarios developed. The left one is draft, and the right one is the final scenario. So you can see there uh, all reductions. And uh, I already presented this scenario this morning, and uh, draft scenario, uh, which included the car coal-fired power plant in scenario one, but it was omitted uh, in final two scenarios. And you can see there, industry sector, industry sector still will emit some amount of uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions. In case of draft, 53.1 uh, million tons, and in case of a final scenario, 51.1 uh, uh, million tons. Because, you know, we cannot make zero emissions from industrial sector. So still some emissions uh, uh, comes from industrial sector. And if we have some emission, it can be uh, maybe absorbed or uh, deleted by carbon sinks or CCUS. That was our strategy. And here, uh, actually, you know, 2015 net zero is a little far from the current situation. The most important thing is, the more important thing is 2030 NDC. And 2030 NDC of Korea is a 40% uh, reduction from 2018 emissions. And in that case, you can see the industrial sector, uh, maybe uh, originally before our 2030 NDC, the reduction rate rate was just 6.4% uh, from uh, in industrial sector, but it became 14.5% uh, in enhanced 2030 NDC. So, you know, the people, business people were very upset, but relatively lower than other sector because uh, it is not easy for Korea, uh, whose industrial structure is very energy intensive. So, uh, and if we replace facilities, in that case, uh, reduction from industrial sector goes like a stairs, not gradual reduction. So, we made such kind of plan. Yeah, I, I want to show you our greenhouse gas emission trend. You can see here, compared with uh, 1990, Korea's greenhouse gas emission grew up 2.5 times. Compared with the other countries, maybe the scale is small, but uh, in the world, it ranks number 11th in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, and especially CO2 from combust uh Parcel fuel combustion, uh, it ranks uh, number nine in the world. So the scale is huge. And it, uh, green CO2 emissions grew up maybe 2.7% times. So it is a little higher than greenhouse gas emissions. So you can see here, South Korea's uh, emissions, uh, maybe higher than global average. Global average was uh, the Annual growth rate was 1.7 percent, but Korea uh, 2.7 percent. So compared with other developing country, our growth rate is uh, modest. But compared with other developed country, our emission growth was uh, relatively high. But anyway, I uh, maybe refer. I want to show you the Taiwan case and Japanese case. We have three countries here, so you know. Uh, in terms of per capita emission, uh, actually Taiwan and J Korea exceeded Japan. <laughs> but in terms of the share of uh, our emissions of total or global greenhouse gas and uh, CO2 emissions, uh, Japan is much higher because Japan's population and land size is much bigger. But uh, I want to show you the ratio between greenhouse gas emission share and the population share. So all three countries' uh, global greenhouse gas share is uh, much higher than its population share. So it means we have more responsibility to reduce greenhouse gases. And in case of Korea, the energy sector 
shares around uh, 87 percent of total greenhouse gas emissions and the energy transformation center 32.7 it is uh, 2021 uh, in case of 2018 it was uh, 37 percent so it's a little lower but anyway you can see industrial sectors uh, uh, emission is very high so there is uh, some dilemma you can see here our energy consumption of industrial sector and Electricity consumption of industrial sector is very high. In terms of final energy, just over 60%, 62% is consumed by industrial sector. Electricity, over 50, FAP, 52.8% is consumed by industrial sector. So I also point out Korea's industrial sector's energy consumption is very high. So for carbon neutrality, we should change everything, especially we should change our energy system, which is wholly depends on uh, fossil fuel. And uh, at the same time, I think, or many scholars think, uh, uh, nuclear power also should be phased out because uh, Carbon is not the only risky component. Radioactivity is also risky, but anyway, you can see here, the centralized electricity and energy system and decentralized system, we will, we can create more jobs through demand side management and the renewable energy technology development and uh, maybe electrification and smart grid operation. But you know, the problem is here. I want to show you the sectoral uh, emissions here. So, that is our goal. Uh, by 2050, we should make a, a net zero carbon neutrality, and we should follow this path. Actually, you know, according to IPCC, we should have a deeper reduction by 2030. But usually, every country use uh, this kind of a straight line by until uh, 2050. Anyway, so. Which sector should reduce how much? That is problematic. So in Korea, uh, coal-fired power plant produce around 40% of our electricity. If we had some uh, maybe uh, intentional uh, less operation of coal-fired plant, in that case, maybe 35. So 35 to 50. Uh, 40% is the share of uh, coal-fired power plant. But you can see here, this is the location of coal-fired power plant. Usually, you know, you can see western part, uh, we have half of our coal-fired power plant in Chungnam province. This is uh, right below Seoul metropolitan area. Because, and here, uh, many nuclear power plant here, so far away from uh, Seoul. But anyway, to, we produce many electricity here and uh, transmit that electricity to Seoul and other metropolitan areas. So that is the reason why these coal-fired power plants are located close to uh, Seoul metropolitan area. But you know, uh, we, the government, the ex-government made this kind of closure plan of uh, coal-fired power plant. So uh, by 2030, uh, 18 more coal-fired power plant will be closed, and by 34, uh, six more will be closed. So what will happen? Especially, you know, this is the Chungnam province, the most heavily uh, located area of coal uh, power plant. So if 12 coal-fired plants are closed in this region, maybe one-third of workers will lose their jobs. So how can we uh, make more jobs for them or their economy? The economy in that region will be uh, threatened by this closure of coal-fired power plant because the workers, uh, they have income and they spend the money uh, in their community. If they lose jobs, it will give a big impact on their regional economy too. 
And we have another big industry that is car manufacturing industry. But as you know, the car industry uh, is changing into electronic cars. But you know, still we have many workers uh, who work for to make uh, combustion engine cars. But you know, close, uh, combustion engine cars uh, compared with the electronic cars, electronic cars use just one third of a part compared with the electronic cars. So not just uh, a uh, big size, large size company, but also medium, small size, who provide parts, automobile parts to uh, Hyundai uh, or uh, Hyundai, Kia, they can lose jobs. And you know, combustion engine cars need more service because part replacement and the engine oil replacement, there is uh, no, not such service required for electronic cars. And the electronic cars, uh, the charge is very simple. We don't need some uh, helpers, assistant. So they can lose jobs. So especially in Korea, you know, in uh, 2018, uh, 1.9 million people were employed uh, in this area. It is 7.1% uh, of total number of employees in Korea. So if we do not have uh, planned, specifically planned nice uh, employment plan, maybe they can lose their jobs. And it gives some uh, impact on their regional economy too. That is the situation we are located. And you know, but, I mentioned about this, a Citizens Council for Carbon Neutrality in this morning. It is composed of lay people represented, maybe we made rep uh, proportional representation based on age, reason, and uh, uh, sexuality, gender. And we gave them information and uh, lecture uh, provided by expert. So they learned, they have accumulated uh, information knowledge for informed decision. And we had four times questionnaire survey uh, through this process. But you know, you can see here, very interesting. Uh, concerning proper time to stop selling uh, combustion engine cars, when they do not have any idea uh, it is the second questionnaire. The first questionnaire was given in orientation time. They do not have any background information. The, the second was just after distributing some learning materials by themselves, we had a questionnaire survey. So from 2030 was the biggest part. But you know, the last part one, 34.5 uh, people to say, uh, maybe were the biggest and 2035. How about the proper time to shut down coal-fired power plant? Or uh, second, this is the biggest part, but you know, uh, the last one, by 2050, delay the decision. Why? Because we asked the factors to be considered the most in establishing the carbon neutrality scenarios. They said fair and just transition is the most important factor for their decision. It means, yeah, we need carbon neutrality as soon as possible, but we should consider people's job and their livelihood. So we cannot uh, stop selling the engine, uh, combustion engine cars, or we should not stop uh, coal-fired power plant because they can lose jobs. So we have this kind of dilemma. And uh, yeah, I do not have um, uh, time left, but here you can see we have a framework act on carbon neutrality and green growth, and it has some chapter and articles for just the transition. And uh, it says about the preparation of a social safety net uh, for climate crisis and the designation of a special district uh, for just the transition and support for business conversion, minimization of risk of property law, support for guarantee of citizen participation, activation of cooperatives and establishment of just a conversion support center. Yeah, we have this kind of very nice framework act, but the problem we have, and this is the second 2050 Carbon Neutrality and Green Growth Commission. Uh, at this time, the sub-commission number 
is uh, uh, maybe reduced from 8 to 4, but still we have just the transition subdivision, subcommission. But we have a very nice law and acts, and there are too many talks about uh, just the transition, but we have not prepared the sub substantial plan for just the transition. That is our uh, situation. So actually, you know, our government should have some uh, employment impact assessment. So nowadays we have this kind of, not until last year, from this year, we are, the government is doing the uh, employment impact assessment concerning these five areas. So still, we do not have any result outcome yet. So I am waiting their result. And still, we do not have a legal system, legal arrangement. We should support uh, this uh, just transition district and uh, uh, workers. But even though we prepared the climate response fund, that's not uh, enough, not sufficient. So we do need to collect more funds to support just the transition district and workers. Yeah, I hope you develop more nice plan and we can follow you and we can cooperate with each other. Thank you. <laughs>